motion by Helmut. Welcome to Minutes by Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we are here to talk about what goes on in the village, the township. You know those government people that uh, they make regulations and laws that affect you out there. That's right. And whether you live in the village of Oxford, the village of Leonard, Addison Township, or Oxford Township, these are the people that y'all went and elected. And the commissions and the committees that make decisions that directly affect you. Whether you chose to go to that meeting or not, that directly did affect you and that could be a very taxing situation and we hope you go to those meetings because there as he says there are surprises that happen you know if you don't attend and uh, we do spread rumors here on this program don't we <laughs> occasionally <laughs> <laughs> so but anyway you can get the context of these meetings just by watching this show uh, they may not be you know exactly per minute as an out of context <laughs> as out of context <laughs> uh, but you'll get the gist of what went on in the meetings shall we talk about a couple of these meetings sure let's begin the paraphrasing okay <laughs> Edison Township had a special board meeting and also uh, Capel Communications uh, had a uh, meeting as well as did <coughs> Oxford Village Council and hopefully we'll have an opportunity to talk about each one of these and we'll start with the Addison Township trustee board special uh -huh. meeting okay uh, why was it, it special? Special? Well, they had to uh, approve the budget, at least get the preliminary oh. finish before they uh, had the public come in and, and review the budgets. And uh, just to start out with this, Bruce Pearson is the uh, supervisor of the township. Mm -hmm. Bruce, of course, heads up this uh, uh, trustee board. Pauline Bennett is the clerk. Lori Fisher is the treasurer for Addison Township. And on the uh, trustee uh, end of it, you've got Jacob Newby mm -hmm. and Joe King. Linda Garrick and uh, Eric Sent. Okay. All right, and uh, all of these individuals were present at this particular meeting. They went through the preliminaries, which includes the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, the consent agenda. Um, consent agenda consists of what? It consists of the uh, bills and any um, communications that occurred. Non controversial stuff. Well, they can be controversial. <laughs> but then they don't grant their consent. <laughs> then they don't grant their consent, right. Okay, so anyway, the consent agenda was approved. Uh, it, within the consent <coughs> agenda is the uh, amount of the bills, but however, they didn't mention when it was approved what the bills were. So oh. and I contacted the uh, township and couldn't reach the clerk at that time. Apparently she was in a meeting and also the treasurer. So anyway, so to be you, determined. Have, you have bills, and we're going <clears> to <throat> spread a rumor. Your bills are $8,632 per Yikes. month. <laughs> okay, that may be a rumor. I okay. think the treasurer just fainted. I think so. <laughs> well, the first thing they did is they, uh, they did approve a resolution, and uh, they're in opposition of a, uh, a House Bill uh, 5098 with the state and the Senate Bill 637, which has to do with wireless communications uh, systems. And what this communication system will do, it will allow, for example, let's take Charter, an opportunity to put uh, repeaters or wireless units <coughs> on uh, light poles or whatever kind of poles oh, that I are thought available. that was an AT&T thing. No, it's, uh, it's all the media. Oh, AT&T, really? Charter, any of them can apply for it through yeah. the state. But what it does, it takes away certain abilities that the township has and the, and the village in some cases where you cannot control the permit process that goes on uh, nor the construction <coughs> if there's uh, debris that kind of thing that occurs you know from the installation uh, and you actually lose some um, money incentives coming from the state also for your township your road commission and so forth consequently does that affect franchise fees for it, cable? it does affect franchise fees, it sure does. And these are reasons why Oakland County Road Commission has had a resolution against it. The uh, um, Township um, Association um, for the state in Lansing, they are opposed also. And now you can see Addison Township is, and I suspect uh, Oxford will more likely lean in that direction as well because it takes away monies that you have to operate with. So is this a bill that has already been put forward by the Senate or the House? Both bills are available. One is in the House and the House bill is uh, 5098. 
the Senate bill is uh, Senate Bill 639, and they're both being reviewed at this time. By committees or what? Uh, well, no, they're actually on the on on the agenda to be uh, reviewed. So, in the Senate, for example, if it pass if it passes the Senate, it'll be before the House. You know, make their choice. You know, then they have to have a on. sort of a com combined bill. Right. Now the other thing is that broadband, of course, is eagerly um, accepted. You know, for the state, everybody wants to expand broadband mm -hmm. because it increases your speed capability uh, for your internet. But uh, there's a lot of issues coming up along the line, folks. So you might want to pay attention. These, this kind of like the iceberg. We're below the iceberg. There's lots going on, so you don't want that to affect you too much, right? Well, what was the old movie uh, V.I. Warshawski that said, "My dad said." Always follow the money. <laughs> Always follow the money. And you can usually find out what happened if you do follow the money. If there is any money. Right. There may not be any money in this case. Well, where it went, anyhow. Where it went, yeah, it just disappeared. You Houdini. wonder Houdini where said that. the money went. <laughs> Didn't Houdini do that? Made things disappear. Anyway, that that's what the state does for you folks <laughs> on the local level here. Um, so anyway, the resolution was uh, pushed uh, forward. A township uh, board uh, fiscal year... Um, meeting dates were approved. In other words, they have to do that every year at a certain time. January is that time. Uh, they then reviewed NOTA and their interlocal agreement. As you know, Oxford reviewed theirs also. And you need to have this agreement between communities uh, for the NOTA, mm -hmm. North Oakland Transportation Authority, in order for them to allocate funds and so forth sure. and, and approve certain things that are on the agenda, you know, for NOTA, right? Right. right. Okay. Um, Good so organization. That, yeah, and that was immediately approved. No <clears> problem <throat> with that. Uh, budget work session. Here's where they get into the budgets. Fire uh, budget was the first one, and Jerry Morowski is the fire chief, as you folks know, in Addison. And uh, interesting guy. Um, I've seen. I followed his budgets for years, and he details everything as to why he's requesting monies. That's not a good everybody thing. does that. Yeah, everybody is just not a fuzzy little yeah. ball out there. It's got specific line items. Right, and one of the trustees commented on this, and, and she said, uh, you know, this is something that really the township do as, should do as a practice, should take, uh, you know, an example from right. Chief Morales. So sharpen up those pencils. <laughs> sharpen them up. Anyway, so they want to know what's going on. It's, it's just a, a matter of exposure for you folks to know what's going on out there as well. Anyway, so his budget... Um, is pretty much dead on. I mean, he watches every penny that comes along. There's a number of things that's got to happen, he said, within the next year or so. And uh, one thing is he wants to add an additional, one additional fireman uh, to the staff. And also, uh, he said that there may be another vehicle that needs to be looked at in terms of replacement for the uh, um, emergency uh, dispatch system that they have. For because, EMTs and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And those, those vehicles have to be replaced roughly every 10 years. So All right. that being said, uh, we'll tell you more about that when we come back right after this. Busy meeting. Our OCTV News Team, bringing your news closer to home. With local news anchors, Elgin Nichols and Terry Stiles, Julie Hogan with Calendar of Events, Cody Wright with Sports, and David Kenny with Auto Talk and Science in the News. OCTV, serving Oxford, Leonard, and Addison communities for over 29 years. Are you a movie buff, a gamer, a fan of music, or do you just enjoy all things media? Then you should watch Media Maniacs on Monday through Friday at 3.30 and at 11.30 on the weekends, right before the all-night movies. Remember, Media Maniacs, they review everything and they're just crazy enough to do it. Welcome back to Miss White Men's. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we are talking about the Addison Township Special Board meeting that they had with the trustees. And uh, one of the main issues of, for having this uh, meeting, of course, the main issue, is for budgets. 
and uh, to establish a budget for the coming year. Uh, the fire chief went over his budget requirements and pretty much looked like everything is pretty well settled there as he's very detailed. Addison Township budget for 2018 or 2018-19. Um, the uh, supervisor said, interesting thing, that they're three quarters of the year uh, into their budget for last year. They've only spent 50% of their budget. So they're in pretty good shape. Wow. Yep, very well done. Tightened up those purse strings. Right. So they said, let's give us a raise. <laughs> and they did. A 4% overall raise for firemen and so forth across the board. Oh. Uh, including the staff. clerk, yeah, the treasurer, the supervisor, the trustees, everybody oh. that's under under control of the Aston Township, you folks out there. Okay? Uh, and it's been a long time since they've had an increase, so... It About was, a year. He was, <laughs> no, no, no. It was eagerly accepted, <laughs> and they did a little Snoopy <laughs> dance and went on. Okay. <laughs> that took care of that. How long ago what, did they get a raise? Oh, I, I think it's... Remember, they actually had a, a situation where during the recession, 2009, oh, uh, yeah. they pulled they back. A, there was a lot of give back there. Yeah. yeah. And the police department, that was another thing, the police uh, proposal that came up. Uh, Bruce Pearson said he would like to see a third shift come back on because in the year 2009, I think it was, they cut staff on third shift. No now, their police department is really supplied by Oakland County Sheriff. Sheriff, right? Sheriff's Department, right. Okay. But it's still financed, you know, through the town. Oh, show. sure, sure. But, so, but yeah. anyway, he said, we have the funds now. He said, we, we need to put third shift back on and um, make that a solid, you know, um, activity on third shift. So, good idea. Uh, <laughs> so it looks like that'll probably go through more likely. But again, it has to be brought uh, forward, you know, um, uh, with the community's consent, you know, which you're going to have a review coming up. But I'm trying to think of what that date is. Uh, it's in February, I want to say the 12th. February 12th, they're going to have a public hearing on the, on the budget. So you folks, on February 12th, can I check your calendar? You might want to be in on this and see what exactly happens because this thing's going to get voted through unless there's major objections, you know, you, you might have. But just to review it, right? Are they are they publishing the budget? It'll be published. It's it's uh, you know public uh, access okay. information. I just wonder so. how people get a hold of it. That's all. Oh well, yeah. Uh, let me see. 2018, <clears throat> 2019 uh, compensation resolutions. That was where they got the pay increase. Took care of that. Uh, one thing I want to mention here is that Jacob Newby has been actively working with one of the neighboring uh, townships to agree to have stone put down on, I believe it's De Quinder, which is kind of near the borderline. Out by Romeo. Yeah, and, uh, but they're willing to do it if we chip in $4,000. We? Uh, I mean, I'm talking about, <laughs> talking about Addison. If, oh, okay. oh, I was we. <laughs> if I were we and I were Addison Township, they want Addison Township to propose <clears throat> $4,000 over a three year period. Okay. And what it'll do is it'll cover is that Washington Township? Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Uh, but it'll cover three full miles of this uh, limestone, which is a very solid material, and take care of that particular road, which they've had difficulties with. Okay. So you folks out there will be happy about that, right? Yep. Okay, let's talk quickly about the Cable Communications Commission meeting. Chairman is uh, <coughs> Char Sotherby, or at least when she started the meeting, she was. <laughs> Jacob Newby uh, serves on that board, and he is the uh, treasurer currently. And the secretary is Bill Dunn, he was current, and Ed Hunwick serves on the board. Uh, Maureen Helmuth is on the board, but she was absent. They did the pledge preliminaries, got those out of the way. Uh, the minutes for 2017, they were approved unanimously, quickly. Uh, public comments, none. Uh, people hiding under the table. Mm. <coughs> bills, okay, the bills for, there's a couple of sections of bills they had. Uh, one was between 11 13 2017 and 12 25 2017 got to keep got to keep those budget years separate you do and you would know that because you're the one that works with that it's $29,401 and 61 cents was the first one that sharp was approved pencil. yep and very sharp uh, review expenses for 018 2018 came out to $10,543 and 11 cents i want you to know this guy watches for every penny that comes through there. That's a good job. 
And I uh, put them in a jar. He puts them in a jar, <laughs> and then he hides it in the backyard. Then he digs it up when it's time. <laughs> only, the only thing is, when he digs it up, he tells you there's only half of it there. Same for a rainy day. It, it was the be. elves. The elves, okay. <laughs> uh, unfinished business. Um, Oxford Community uh, Attorney. Terry Stiles uh, said that she did some checking. Terry is our uh, executive director, producer here at the station. She did some checking and found out that uh, none of the uh, TV stations, or at least most of them, do not have attorneys on retainer. So I know this was discussed in the past. Right. So, uh, the proposal by Bill Dunn was, well, okay, uh, the only reason why he objected <coughs> originally to having uh, Bob Davis as the attorney was because it was in conflict under certain issues that were occurring that impacted all three communities at mm -hmm. the same time, and he was the same attorney for all three. Not a good idea. And he said he had no objections in using uh, Bob Davis, you know, for other legal right. situations. So, so basically, he's not on retainer, but he's our go-to. Yep, he is. And it was approved that he's the guy that they need to talk to. So he's going to continue to be Communications Commission uh, attorney, Bob Davis. Okay, uh, what came up next? New business. Elect new officers. Okay, here we said there's some changes. Shar Sotherby has been kicked to the, I mean, moved to the curb. Uh, I mean, put on the sideline. Ed Hunwick took over that position. Now Shar is vice. Now Shar is vice. So she tried to run, but she couldn't run fast. They got her for <laughs> vice chairman. So anyway, treasurer, again, was appointed Jacob Newby. Mm -hmm. And secretary, because she wasn't there. Um, Almost. Gotta go to these meetings. <laughs> yeah. She was bushwhacked, guys. Uh, but anyway, she's going to be the secretary. Uh, Bill Service uh, did a review of the com existing committees, and he said the tech committee uh, actually hasn't done a whole lot in the last year. And he felt uh, a good idea is use the president or the chairperson, Ed Hunwick, and himself to work with the, uh, with the um, technical side of it, as well as also involved with the uh, architectural plans and development of the new location. That's the Facilities Committee. Facilities Committee, right. And that would be at uh, Seymour Lake Park, okay. where it's going to be. So that's a, that's a process in, in action. And he's, he's got, I think, until what, 2019 sometime? Uh, to before we need to move out of here? Roughly, yeah. Okay, so February. this guy is hiding more coins in the backyard as we speak. Like a move. squirrel, got to find them now. <laughs> yeah, don't forget where they are, that's a good thing. Uh, management report, uh, YouTube, uh, good news. Uh, Manager Bill Service said that in 2016, actually December 7th through January 2016, 7,795 people viewed us on YouTube. That's 7,795 people. 95 people, that's a lot of people. But in 2017, 2018, get this, 11,765 new visitors. Pretty fantastic. Good job. Yes. But, okay, so that took care of that, and of course he did a little Snoopy dance too, Bill did, and uh, that pretty much settled that particular item. Brandon Sink is a new employee, and Bill wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of him. He's going to be doing uh, camera work as well as he does calendar of events for this station. Uh, they did talk great about... Great voice. Great voice. Very good, as we'd say, pipes. Yep. You'll hear him on some of the promos, I'm sure, as we go along. Terry um, made a point that the drone that we have, the uh, studio drone, is being used for promos at this point in terms of footage. How is that drone now? It is, is it droning healthy? along. It's healthy now. It's just a droning along. Not trimming any more trees. <laughs> and speaking about droning along, <laughs> we'll be back right after this, folks. There are those who dedicate themselves to a sense of honor, to a life of courage, and a commitment to something greater than themselves. They have always defended this nation other. They still do. The few. The proud. The Marines.
Welcome back to Minutes by Minute. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kennedy. And we are talking about the Cable Communications Commission meeting held on January 22nd. And we're going to wrap it up right now by saying that, uh, where's the employee handbook? <laughs> oh, it's on a lawyer's desk. <laughs> yes, it's been there for how long? Well, we've you been recall? dipping that one in and bringing it out for the last, oh, what, three Can years? Can you even remember? <laughs> I'll say three years, but then again, I'm not an archaeologist. <laughs> <laughs> Since that time, I think most of the employees have been flying on a wing and a prayer. A wing and a prayer. Mostly a prayer. Uh, pretty much improvise, right? Well. Well, anyway, suggestion is that uh, maybe we need to find out what stage uh, the handbook is in and also possibly think about getting an HR uh, for that which is a, That's uh, a human relations. And that is a good suggestion. Very good. I'm surprised you didn't think of that one three years ago. Didn't make any difference. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it didn't. <laughs> but human relations uh, is a good approach. That's what most people do in these instances. And well, the in the past three years, I'm sure a few things have changed. You think? <laughs> okay. Well, let's talk about now the Oxford Village Council, which is always rather interesting, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Okay, Sue Passard is the uh, chairperson, president of the uh, council. Uh, vice chair is Eric Dolan. Maureen Helmuth serves on that board. Dave Bailey, uh, who was absent at the beginning of the meeting, but then showed up about, oh, about 15 minutes late uh, and jumped into a seat and ready to go. Uh, Joe Frost was absent and was approved absence. Now, along with that board, uh, Drew Benson, who was the intern, uh, manage, manager intern for the village was there and doing the recording. Uh, Joe Madore, who is the new village manager, was there, and Bob Davis, of course, the village attorney, mm. who serves on other committees and boards and so forth, too. Pledge of Allegiance, preliminaries, agenda was approved, and uh, let me see, public, uh, non agenda items. Anybody out there like to speak about anything that's not going to be in the meeting time? Checking their shoes. No, <laughs> nobody <laughs> wanted to talk. So anyway, so the next thing was the approval of the consent agenda. And Eric Dolan made a motion to approve the consent agenda along with the uh, bills and the amount of $103,087.73. Wow. Get your pen out. They gave that pretty short shrift. And <laughs> they did. <laughs> so they zipped through that one pretty quick. Now, the under old business was a police vehicle under... Mike Solwald. Remember mm -hmm. the last meeting they had? Uh, Mike had proposed a couple of vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them needs to be replaced in his police force in the village. Oh, that was the uh, Ford versus the Chevy. Yes, or Chrysler at the time. Chrysler, okay. Yep. And actually, Eric Dolan at that time brought up the fact that the reliability of a Tahoe Chevrolet was much better than the other two. He being a policeman? Yep, even though, it's, yeah, he being an officer would know that. Uh, in another community, though, not in Oxford. Um, so he said that he would like to see them look at a Tahoe. Well, Mike Solwell, the chief, said, well, they're more money. He said, I did check on them. They were like $10,000 more. And they felt that that was probably a good thing to do if the reliability is going to be that much better than the other two vehicles rather than lose the money in maintenance. You do want them to run. You do want them to run. Let me see. There goes the criminal. Hmm. I can't get the car started. <laughs> <laughs> could be an issue. Yes, it could. Well. Uh, so anyway, Mike uh, had several bids that he brought in from various dealers uh, from around the state and mostly around the local area. And they did have a talk or chit chat back and forth between the um, chamber, the, the council members and uh, Mike Solwald concerning the, the dealers that he had investigated the pricing on. It looks like the pricing came in at roughly thirty-three dollars to $35,000 per unit, plus um, getting it outfitted you know, with the equipment required. Isn't there also a facility to go through the state? Well, to, Synergy to is the company that they go through for their lights and their radios and all mm -hmm. this kind of yeah. stuff for police. But I'm and talking the base vehicle. There is, and these various places provide that discount in accordance with the state requirements. Oh, okay, okay. So, but they, even with that, they deviated. You know, several of the dealers were a thousand, two thousand dollars difference. Well, they probably a lot of certain amount of flexibility. Right. 
And at one point, uh, Eric Dolan said, well, he said, I think that maybe, you know, if we don't get the better pricing here, maybe we should go outside the area and look at pricing. Ooh. He said, go to a bigger mm -hmm. dealer. Not buy local? Uh, that uh, didn't sit over very good with a couple of people <laughs> on the board. But Of course, local is kind of, you know, yeah. how many miles away? Well, for example, uh, Hank Graff, he's got over 10, 12 dealerships mm -hmm. uh, across the state in Ohio. And that was one of the places he checked. So... Um, Actually, the uh, village manager, Joel um, uh, Madour, he brought that up. He said, if you're talking to a big company, he said, in terms of auto dealerships, he said, Hank Graff would be the, probably one of the largest there are. And he said, you already have a quote from him. So I don't know where else you'd go. So his point was pretty well taken there. Dolan says, though, and by the way, he was the one that made the motion to the table at last time to check out the, the Tahoe information. And he says this time, well, he said, I want to see what the exact cost is for the outfitting. I want to know the exact cost of what the vehicle is <sighs> and what the final total is going to be on it. And he said, and you should bring three bids forward with that information. And he says, so we can make a decision on it. They all looked at each other. <laughs> Maureen almost says, well, okay, what the heck. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do it. Yeah. So they made a motion to table it. Oh, Again, no. <laughs> Mike uh, Sowell uh, stood there with his jaw <laughs> open, wondering what's going on here. But it uh, looks like uh, a little point of micromanaging here for the chief. Well, but as I, long as they don't take so much time that the vehicle that they want to replace goes down. <laughs> well, the, the chief says that they have time to do this, but he would prefer to have one right away. Uh -huh. uh, Wally Edgar apparently has one on his lot. That's ready to go. Oh, he's the Chevrolet dealer he's in Lake Orion. Yep. And he has one that's ready to go. It's just a matter of moving the uh, Synergy equipment over to it and what existing equipment he has, okay. you know, to make it work. But they didn't seem to want to entertain that at this point. And as he pointed out, that vehicle may be gone, he said, by, you know, by the time you're ready for this. And cool. Eric Dolan said, well, it wouldn't matter to him if it was 12 weeks or 13 weeks or 14 weeks, as long as there's not a rush for it to do it. Okay. So he said he wanted to make sure that all the I's were dotted and T's were crossed, so to speak. So anyway, so it was uh, set aside until the next meeting, until uh, Chief Solwald, who has nothing to do on his free time, <laughs> has to put this together <laughs> again, okay, and uh, get a recommendation, you know, go forward with it. Um, let me see. What else we got going there? That was a pretty interesting little session they had there. Uh, new business. Mirror, the Mirrors uh, Retirement Program. The what? Have. The Mirrors Program. What is that? It's a uh, Michigan Unemployment mm, something other system. I can't recall what they are. Is. Okay. But anyway. Retirement. It, retirement. That's it. Retirement system. It's the retirement system. I did say that, though, didn't I? Well. Oh, okay. Kind of cast out. <laughs> kind of cast out. <laughs> I mean, just had to fit it in the right spot. Uh, so anyway, they... Uh, <clears throat> they uh, the manager said that right now we're 63 percent of what mirror should be and he said that's very good in terms of village so you don't have a thing to worry about there um you're 63 percent of what it should be what it what they recommend <clears throat> oh what your level should be in payment in so it'd be good if it was 100 percent well that, that, you're not going to see the 100 percent why not usually it's that 50 55 percent oh, is it yeah we're oh. at 62 so we're pretty good all right public comment none management report um he said that uh, the, yeah. let me see, McKenna and Associates are going to get involved soon with the uh, cross connections for the water system. Okay. That's pretty much it. What's coming up? Oh, we got a few meetings. On uh, February 5th at 7 o'clock, the Village of Oxford Zoning Board of Appeals, so check on that one because sometimes they mm -hmm. don't meet. On 2-6 at 7 o'clock, the Village of Oxford Paul Lanning Commission. And on 2-8, at 7 o'clock, the Oxford Township Planning Commission, and at 6 o'clock that same day, Addison Township Zoning Board of Appeals. Check on that one to see if it's going to be. Absolutely. This is Minutes by Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. Catch you next time right here. See you then.